bracing for revenge. The sound of air raid sirens heard across Ukraine's capital as the city prepares for Russia to retaliate after the Kremlin says it prevented an assassination attempt on Vladimir Putin. On Russian state TV, this right here is the message. Every day control centers, the presidential office in Kyiv and the government building should be turned into dust. Those sorts of threats creating chaos in the streets of Kyiv after a low-flying drone was spotted in the capital. You can see it being hit right there and then going down in this ball of flames. Shortly after that incident, Ukraine acknowledging the drone was one of its own, shot down because Ukraine lost control of it. Now, this was a sigh of relief, but one that may be short-lived. Meanwhile, Russia ramping up its claims that yesterday's drone strike on the Kremlin was carried out by Ukraine and the U.S., and tonight, the U.S. is responding. I know there's lots of questions, but we just don't have conclusive evidence. One thing I can tell you for certain is that the United States was not involved in this incident in any way, contrary to Mr. Peskov's lies. And that's what they are, just lies. And in a moment, I'm going to speak to a former Russian lawmaker who told CNN exclusively that it was Russian partisans and not Ukraine behind these drone attacks on the Kremlin. Insight he first shared with our Matthew Chance, who has been covering this story extensively. Matthew, what more are you learning tonight? Well, tonight there's a lot happening in Russia because uh, Russian television is reporting more uh, drone strikes in multiple locations across the country, particularly in areas uh, close to the Ukrainian uh, border. This as uh, the Kremlin vows to press ahead with the Victory Day uh, celebrations, the, the military parade that's scheduled in a, in a few days from now, despite those dramatic drone strikes on the Kremlin earlier this week. Sixty minutes, the Kremlin version, with breaking news of three more attempted drone strikes on Russian soil. The anchor, a Kremlin mouthpiece, tells her millions of viewers how two attacks on oil facilities were unsuccessful. But another, targeting a village near the Ukrainian border, she admits, got through. Increasingly, Russia's war in Ukraine is coming home. Just hours before, it was the Kremlin itself in the line of fire. A Ukrainian assassination attempt on President Putin, said officials, denied by Ukraine. Now the Kremlin says it's the United States that's to blame. We know very well that decisions about such actions, about such terrorist attacks, are made not in Kyiv, but in Washington. I mean, Washington. And Kyiv does what it is told to do. There's a word that comes to mind that I'm obviously not uh, not appropriate. But U.S. officials are pushing back. Mr. Peskov's lying. I mean, that's obviously it's a ludicrous claim. The United States had nothing to do with this. We don't even know exactly what happened here, uh, Caitlin. But I can assure you the United States had, had no role in it whatsoever. But Ukraine is bracing itself for a further Russian response. Earlier, Russian drones with messages for Moscow and for the Kremlin, scrawled on them, were intercepted. All this as Ukraine's president is on an unannounced European tour, briefly stopping in The Hague in the Netherlands to condemn his Russian counterpart. Of course, we all want to see different Vladimir here <laughs> in The Hague. The one who deserves to be sentenced for these criminal actions. Back in the capital of the Russian Federation, Muscovites seem unfazed, at least publicly, by the extraordinary events unfolding in their city. The drone strike on the Kremlin was going to happen sooner or later, says this man, Nikita. We live in an awesome country, says Anastasia, the best protected in the world. Even more shocking, then, that someone was able to penetrate those defences and attack. Yeah, shocking indeed. Well, well tonight, um, of course, the Kremlin is lashing out, still at Ukraine, the United States as well. But, you know, Pamela, the fact is that drone strikes, political assassinations, 
arson attacks, they've all, in the past 12 months or so, become a fact of everyday Russian life. Back to you. Matthew Chance, thank you. Out front now, Ilya Ponomarev. He is a former Russian lawmaker who was forced into exile after he became the only Russian lawmaker to vote against the annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014. So as I mentioned, you told Matthew that you believe the drone attack on the Kremlin was the work of Russian partisans. Why do you believe that? Good evening. Uh, I just don't simply believe it. I know it as a fact. Uh, I know the people who actually produced those drones. Those drones were self-made. They were not uh, factory uh, manufactured. We are discussing that they had plans to uh, attack uh, Red Square on the 9th of May, but uh, since uh, this day is very special for the hearts of uh, Russians and their Russians uh, themselves, they were thinking that maybe it would be better to make a warning strike to make uh, Vladimir Putin to cancel the uh, military parade on the 9th of May altogether. So you talked to them directly, is that what you're saying, that you discussed this with them? Yes. Matthew, as you just heard there, I just mentioned other drone strikes in Russia. Do you think Russian partisans are behind those too? No, the, uh, there are different attacks because there are attacks that have uh, military uh, meaning. And the attacks on the uh, oil refineries or oil storages that were happening next to Ukrainian border, uh, at least most of them for sure are the attacks that were carried out by Ukrainian uh, security forces who are preparing for the offensive and they are uh, cutting off the uh, supplies of uh, the military goods and uh, and the fuel and uh, everything related. Uh, uh, by the way, the first attack on one of the refineries that were affected recently, Novoshaktinsk refinery, was done by Russian partisans from uh, uh, Rostov region. And at that time, it was a big uh, scandal. And there was even uh, Washington guys calling the office of the president in Ukraine, uh, complaining that they promised not to attack Russian uh, territory. And that was a year ago. And at that time, uh, Ukrainian officials even turned to me and was asking whether it was indeed Russian partisans or not. And I was like giving them um, information about about this. But this time, it's it's about the uh, offensive. But what's happening in Moscow, for sure, it's not Ukrainians. And uh, it's out of range. Uh, the reason why uh, anti-missile defense of Russia did not uh, 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 intercept those drones were because those drones were launched uh, right next to Moscow. Hmm. What do you think the real impact of this attack on Putin was? If it is, in fact, these Russian partisans, as you say, do you think their objective was achieved here? Uh, we'll see on the 9th uh, of May, obviously, uh, the uh, security measures in Moscow would be uh, uh, tightened. And I hope that the, uh, the uh, Russian authorities would make the right decision to downsize the military parade. At the end of the day, the objective was to demonstrate to Russians that uh, the war indeed, as you correctly said, is at home and it's no longer somewhere there. And everybody has to take a side and uh, to make his decision. It cannot just sit on the couch and uh, watch the uh, TV uh, looking whether ours are winning or somebody else's are winning. That's, that's the real war. You know, Russia touts its security often and its ability to protect Putin. Do you think that this is embarrassing to Putin? No, well, I don't think there was uh, any uh, immediate threat to Vladimir Putin because it was indeed uh, it was a very lightweight attack on the uh, dome of uh, uh, one of Kremlin's uh, buildings uh, that, that cannot affect Vladimir Putin even theoretically, even if he were in in that uh, particular building, uh, <laughs> he would not be. A, he would not be effective. It's right now his propaganda statements that it was an assassination attempt. Obviously, it was uh, uh, just uh, a, a symbolic act that was targeted to show that the parade uh, could be affected and it would be even bigger embarrassment if some drones would land at the Red Square on the very 9th of May when all this military equipment, glorious military equipment of Russia uh, would be demonstrated there. All right, Ilya Ponomarev, thank you. Interesting to hear your perspective on this. Appreciate it. Thank you.